to a certain extent, Occupy Amsterdam evicted itself. Um, I mean, there'll be those that disagree with me about this, but from because of the situation and because of the setup, obviously, and this is a problem that, that is in New York, it's in open, it's everywhere. It attracts a, a huge number of people who are marginalised by greater society. So we had, rather than mm -hmm. the normal share of alcoholics, junkies, people with mental health problems, uh, homeless people, we had a huge <laughs> proportion of people with those problems, and we're having to deal with those in a society that has no structures for dealing with them. And it got to the point where, with sleepless nights, and with the cold, and with the food, and with ultimately the threat from the mayor, if you don't sort out this problem because this is your image and we no longer want this image, it became a question of image, so let's, and hygiene, yeah. and health, and, and so, yeah, so, so solving that problem was made, was, was put to the foreground, and so there, was, there, were, there were kind of decisions made which weren't entirely made, Concretely, there was a kind of general will. Okay, we have to do something to change our image, and that was then voted for in the General Assembly that we will do something to change the image. But that was then picked up by smaller groups who took it upon themselves to change the image in a very radical way by perhaps not quite forcibly, but in fact physically removing tents so that people had nowhere to stay, um, and doing that with such conviction that ultimately what happened is that we, that we evicted ourselves. And having removed the tent, it was very easy for the fire department to come in and say, oh, but the few tents that you thought you were allowed to stay here with, and the sleeping circumstances that you've set up for yourselves, which was to move, in fact, all the tents inside one big tent, to clean up the image of all these little rickety tents, uh, 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 we can't have that because this is a fire hazard. And having done that, it was then very easy for the mayor to say, I can't do that and we've already taken so many steps this far, okay, so we'll put up with just having this, this tiny presence, which is basically an, an information centre, and in fact, a, 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 quite some um, activities and, uh, and actions, uh, manifestations taking place, but it's a very different Occupy <coughs> verse plane than it, than it originally was. Those tents that you're talking about that you took upon to clear yourself, I don't have a knowledge of, of the, the Occupy mm -hmm. experience in Amsterdam, but were they tents that people were actually occupying? Yet? Oh yes, yeah. yes. The people, people, you know, there were signs hung. It was terribly poignant because, in fact, the signs that were hung up, a, a group of people took it upon themselves to put signs on the tents saying, "Tomorrow morning at nine o'clock, you'll be evicted, please." <laughs> it was like the signs that were on the buildings in, you know, in, you know, in Detroit, London, wherever people foreclosure, people, it's, it's foreclosure yeah. signs. It was yeah. like foreclosure signs being put on people's tents, and these were the undesirables of the occupied tent because a decision had been made that only people who were, the real were actively yeah. were the real <laughs> occupiers were That's active. disgusting. That's it's disgusting. absolutely <laughs> disgusting, and yeah. it's the main reason that, in fact, Elka and I. And was really because rather than put our energy into fighting that, um, we we made a decision to That's remove really, our, to I mean, take our our, our um, input into occupy and occupy in another way elsewhere. Well, I don't fully agree on the fact that this is disgusting. We have the same kind of situation in this place, where there's a lot of freeloaders, if you might, might want to call them like that, people who come in and think they can just simply use a place and mm -hmm. hang out there and not contributing in any society, in any way, if you're creating a society, you're going to have to have people yeah, that are active within your society. There's different types of democracy, aren't there? We're talking about a radical <coughs> democracy that's radically heterogeneous, or are we talking about democracy of kind of, you know, rational and reasonable uh, producing people who are able to, you know, participate effectively in civil society? I mean, what, what type of democratic, radical vision are we talking about? Well, I think if you're yeah. going to try to create a new society, then you're going to end up with this problem any, any of time. Of course you end up with the problem, but you have to negotiate the problem, not through internalizing a uh, uh, violent... Um, look, I'm just throwing in my two cents worth. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, we have that problem because we live in a society that is dysfunctional and, and people are marginalized. And if we're going to be occupying public space, we're going to have precisely those problems. I think so we yeah, do yeah. it in full yeah. cognizance of the fact yeah. that we're going to deal with those problems. But by internalizing that, that kind of violent mechanism by the sounds of it, and I, I don't know what happened because I wasn't... Okay, there. I think there were two levels to it. There was the level of how, would, how, what, how could we or would we have dealt with it if there hadn't been this outside pressure, and it would be very interesting to see how would we have dealt with it if there hadn't been the threat from the mayor that if we don't clean up our acts because the shops around us or the tourists or 
whatever the reasoning is, how would we then have dealt with it? And I think in the end we may well have made some kind of collective decision that there are people who are too destructive or are um, not just incapable of contributing but active, actively being destructive or, or whatever. But the, and there could have been some decision made about that which would have grown out of the collective thing or maybe doing a simple exclusion of those people. Okay, you've got your tent, that's fine, but we're not, you know, the old, the old kind of old-fashioned thing of cutting people off. But does that space uh, exist? I mean, that space, but that space free, from the, that, that, free from the threat of but no, uh, state the, enclosure? The threat, the threat was somehow accelerated it. So what happened was the threat made it imminent that we would all have to leave, and so therefore the way of the, the, the necessity to deal with that problem for some people I mean, my attitude would have been to ignore the threat and just say, this is what we are and we stay. And if you're going to evict us, then evict all of us. Because it would have been politically worse for the mayor to have had to do that than the way he did it, which was politically very clever. Yeah. Yeah. But look, sorry, I'm, I'm a little bit angry at the Occupy. Also, actually, I'm really, really angry at the Occupy. <laughs> no, because you're now blaming it on the threat of the mayor. And there is a huge, in, in a, especially in Amsterdam, is a huge knowledge about yeah. activism, like for four yeah. decennials already and the Occupy kind of stepped into this so unbelievably naive and and did, was refusing actually to take knowledge from all these people who know how this thing because these things were coming I mean logically that uh, they were not going to stay there all the time of course the mayor is going to put pressure we have experienced how the mayor is he's a clever guy he's a bastard but he's a clever guy <laughs> and, and you stepped in, in uh, mistake after mistake after mistake and then blaming it on someone else <laughs> and and uh, and the same and even it got really really worse actually and uh, with the shell building as well and you will say well that's not part of us but it was and and uh, in the end it's just the only statement which came out of it is uh, we are not squatters while you have just really such a huge potential of making your political point so where and were that's you actually to help what did, did you help did you assist no no uh, I was I was stayed on, far away from it no I want to answer it. no problem I, I stayed far away from it no I'm not finished actually um, because uh, no and the thing is also uh, not just refusing to cleaning up your name your image we're talking about this all the time you were actually busy with yourself all the time and not making a political stand and I think that what is supposed to be, the society is fucked up, and that, that's where you should uh, go for it. And in the end it was just, indeed, having your own little tents or not, and being with, dealing with the pressure and stuff like that. But we have been doing this for, for ages here already. Okay. Yeah, but that, should, should I stop yeah. this? Because, I mean, Occupy Amsterdam, I mean, Elkin Jimin in there, two of like 1,000 people that... Um, well, that's fair enough. Part of the, I know uh, that. No, but the general still, assembly, you're no, talking wait, about it here wait now. Wait a moment. So, uh, Sorry, I'm talking about, I'm talking now, sorry. Uh, I mean, this is like, and I am I also was part of it, and I, I, I've been there in the square, and Occupy Amsterdam was really like a huge people, and it was a lot of, uh, and I think what uh, I was also seeing uh, the 15, um, in, in, in Barcelona, I was there, and uh, I, I mean, I see that the, um, the, the, the difficulty of Occupy Amsterdam because, uh, and if you want also the positive thing, that there were a lot of people without any political experience mm -hmm. at all. I mean, any, I mean, uh, really like the, the discussion, the, I mean, so there were like some people that they have political experience and they tried to grow it into, but there were a lot of people that there were they didn't have any political, I mean, the majority of them. There were some who had, and they should have not. Yeah, 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 Just but a lot, a lot. so a lot of people that they also, I mean, they have also you have to deal with, with the, I mean, this is the difficulty also to create yeah. a common, I think, no? When you have like a certain, I mean, there are people that they have real clear what they want to build up and what is the, what, what they demand in terms of democracy and experience, but there are a lot of people that they be really like jump on, on the wave of the Occupy International, you know? I mean, on this way of uh, from, you know, what happened in Wall Street or wherever, I mean, in the world. And they were really like, wow, I mean, this is, I want to be part, but they were no, um, and I think it's been also like the limit of Occupy Amsterdam to not create a base for uh, a political discussion, you know, to, um, on the base. Is, so wait, 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 is, there, is there anyone taking hands? Can someone? Yeah, I will yeah, yeah, yeah. a hand here, Thank yeah, a hand here, and then Marai. No, I'm not <laughs> 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 can I, can, can, can 
I just like to respond because I, I agree with you. I do think that so that it, it would have been really good if what was happening at Burst Plain had made use of existing uh, experience with political activism in the Netherlands. I completely agree. I'd also just like to clarify a bit our position. Um, because we're here now speaking about Occupy Amsterdam, but actually our position in Occupy Amsterdam was, was a rather odd one because we were in the artist's tent. Now the artist's tent was on the edge of Occupy Amsterdam, literally, but also figuratively. We, 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 were, we were a large tent, we were a collective, we, the tent was manned continuously and three or four people slept there each night, but it meant that each of us wasn't present there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And we also, our, or the role that we had taken on, on ourselves, correct me if I'm saying this all wrong, or anybody else who knows more than I do about it, um, was to actually to make an attempt to try and counter the image of, which was prevalent of Occupy Amsterdam as just being dope smoking hippies and drunk Ukrainians um, by by creating a kind of centre within the t within the camp to which people who didn't have any affinity with hippies or Ukrainians or whatever else or even activism could somehow become involved. <coughs> with the Occupy movement. So what we did was, was create a program of a reading group. We had lectures, there was the, uh, we were involved workshops. in workshops, we were involved yeah. in the Occupy uh, College Good. providing lectures. We had a karaoke evening with protest songs, we had a banner making workshop. We had, so we were providing a way for people who would be put off by the mm. idea of old fashioned activism or by drunken hippies or whatever to become involved. And that was our role. And to a certain extent, the, we did have a kind of guilty feeling about not being embedded. We were embedded, but we weren't. I don't know. We were. We, we were also cleaning up. We were also doing the peacekeeping force. So, but there was this funny mixture of being part and not, and, and still having a distance to it, which was uncomfortable, but also necessary. Because if we immersed ourselves entirely in the everyday things of collecting food and everything else, then we wouldn't have been able to provide the, the services that we were providing, which was a slightly different to the rest of the occupant. Yeah. So, so, yeah. oh, did you want to say something? Yes, shortly. I also really don't agree that Occupy didn't make any political statement at all. I think it, it, what you said, like the there were like <laughs> lots of people who never um, were involved in activism or uh, a political a political discourse that joined us and they were part of a learning process and they made mistakes but I think these mistakes are very important because I think lots of people also <coughs> fatal no no they're not Sorry. fatal because they're it's still going yes. on it's still going plate, on really. it's not the have done the whole shit yeah, but, um, yeah. 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 <laughs> but it's, it will continue and i have like i have a lot of faith that like lots of people learned a lot and that this is and and because there were so many people who just like had a taste of it for a first time and they got really inspired so i think this is this this was a very political statement to make <coughs> activism accessible for a bigger group of people. And I think that the caring that went on in the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. I know he's, it, yeah. I think that the, the, the one of the things that people visiting the camp from the outside, passers by, noticed about the camp, particularly because we had this huge percentage of people who needed taken care of to some extent, was the fact that people were being taken care of. And I think that in itself is a huge political statement, that here is a, 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 a structure in which people are being taken care of. The fact that people were being looked after, people were not being allowed to fall asleep on the ground, that people were doing the peacekeeping force, that was something that made a huge impression on passers-by. And I do think that is a political statement. And I think that's one of the major things that has come out of the, uh, out of the presence of Occupy Amsterdam on the Burst Plain.